Are you wondering which type of heating or cooling system to get for your new home? Did your heater or AC break down and you need a replacement? Or are you just curious about the financials of oil or gas versus electric or heat pumps? I'm Kata, grab a cup of coffee and let's talk about it. Heating and cooling still comes down to cost in many cases. So which heating and cooling system helps you to save the most money? If you're interested in the economic viability of heating and cooling systems or other technology, please subscribe and hit the bell and let's get started. In this video, I focus on the financials of oil furnaces versus geothermal heat pumps. But the financial model I'll introduce you can be used for pretty much any heating and cooling system. And this video is purely about the financials of heating and cooling systems. So if you're interested in how heating and cooling systems work or their advantages and disadvantages, please check out my other heating and cooling videos. Let's start with the operating cost. The upper part is the heating and the lower part is the cooling expense. At 75% efficiency of the oil furnace, 881 gallons of fuel oil are required to provide 95 million BTUs of annual heating load. At a price per gallon of oil of $3.30, the fuel furnace costs $2,907 per year. To achieve the same annual heating load, the geothermal system costs $1,537 US dollars at a price per kilowatt hour of 18.8 .8 cents. So the savings per month are $114 with the geothermal system. To cool the home in the summer, the AC costs $555 for 30 million annual cooling load. To achieve the same cooling load, the geothermal system costs $320. That's $20 of monthly savings for cooling. The total savings per month are $134 and the savings per year are $1,605. My PhD is in metallurgy and materials engineering and I worked as a top management consultant in various industries. But I did install a heating and cooling system in our home and I did heavy research around the subject. Now let's take a look at the return on investment. I'll walk you through three examples. In the first case you have an existing oil furnace and you wonder whether it financially speaking makes sense to repair the oil furnace or invest in a geothermal system. In the second and third case, you don't have a heating and cooling system and you're wondering whether you should invest in a geothermal system or in an oil furnace. In the second case, we use a geothermal system in the low price range. And in the third case, we use a geothermal system in the higher price range. To compare the total upfront cost difference, we subtract the price of the geothermal system by the price of the oil furnace replacement or the new oil furnace and the AC unit. The next section is essentially the same, but it includes the 26% federal incentive. So in case of a low range geothermal system, it's actually more expensive to invest in a new oil furnace and a new AC unit. To calculate the linear break even of the investment in a geothermal system, we simply divide the total upfront cost difference, including federal incentives, by the savings per year. So in this case, it would take 4.6 years to pay down the investment in a geothermal system versus replacing the oil furnace with the savings per year. And it's easy to forget that after the break even, you continue to have these savings and you already paid down the system. So what's the future value in a given amount of years? For that, we calculate the future value at a specific interest rate, number of periods. So five years in this case, the payment amount that is $1,605 per year and the present value of 7,350. So to repair the oil furnace after five years, the future value is negative. That means taking the interest rate of 4% into account, we haven't reached the break even yet. And what about the opportunity cost of investing that amount with 4% interest rate in the meantime? For that, we subtract the opportunity cost from the future value. So this is the future value 
and we subtract the future value of having the amount invested in the geothermal system instead of repairing the oil furnace with the number of periods, the payment amount in this case is zero because that's included in the future value. The present value of the investment in the geothermal system versus repairing the oil furnace. So again, the interest rate of four, number of periods of five, payment amount. Since we don't have regular payments, the present value of the investment and that gives us future value minus opportunity cost. So you might think, okay, after five years, it's not worth investing in a geothermal system versus repairing the oil furnace. But how does it look like after 10 or 15 years? So we simply change the number of years and you can see that the future value minus the opportunity cost is of course positive after the break even, which including the interest rate is between 11 and 12 years. So what about the return on investment? For that, we take the future value minus the investment and divide it by the investment. And what does that mean for my annual rate of return? For that, we divide the future value by the investment. Take the 11th square root because we have a number of periods of 11 and subtract one or 100 percent so you could say in order to make more money than investing in a geothermal system versus a new oil furnace and a new ac you would have to have invested that money at more than 19.5 percent in the case of a high range geothermal system and at 22.8 percent in case of a low range geothermal system. I hope this helps you make a decision on whether to invest in a geothermal system. And of course you can put in your own numbers. I'll provide the link to the model in the description below. So why do we focus on savings when it comes to deciding for a heating and cooling system? The aspect of better quality of air and comfort has become increasingly important, especially for people in places where wildfires have negatively affected the air quality. So people want to make sure that the air they breathe is healthy and clean. And a good way to do so is to invest in a heat pump, in particular when combined with a heat recovery ventilation system. However, for the vast majority out there, heating and cooling is still considered a commodity because the product, a warm and comfy home, is expected to essentially be the same regardless of heating and cooling system. That's it for now on the financials of gas or oil versus electric or heat pumps. Please let me know in the comments what kind of heating and cooling system you currently use if you're thinking about switching. These videos take a while to put together, so I'd very much appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.